Good morning. Welcome to St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Catholic Church. Today we observe the fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please join us in singing the hymns and acclamations and the communion antiphon at the beginning of the communion procession. The text for the antiphon can be found in Breaking Bread immediately after today's gospel reading. We welcome those of you who are joining us through our live stream this morning. Please go to our website at seatoncatholicchurch.org for a link to, today's, link to today's readings and a worship aid. Our prelude this morning is Be Still and Know That I Am God, it's at number 465. And you're breaking bread. Let's sing together number 465. Our entrance hymn will be found at number 320. Let us go to the altar, number 320. Once again, we observe the fifth Sunday in ordinary time. Let's stand and sing together number 320.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I want to uh, welcome Deacon, newly ordained Deacon Jimmy, who is uh, joining us today. You some might have remembered him from a couple of years ago when he was nothing but a lowly seminarian. Now, <laughs> let us welcome him this morning. And also with us is Deacon Hugo, who you know. <laughs> we hear how Jesus goes about his healing ministry. He was known to many people primarily as a healer, someone who had compassion on the sick and the suffering, and who never hesitated, it seems, to bring wholeness and healing to those who were in need. Knowing this, let's begin by asking him for the healing that we desire, especially spiritual healing from our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Father, keep your family safe with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, we may be defended always by your protection. Grant this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We will not be uh, having a children's liturgy today. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of hirelings? He is a slave who longs for the shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, when shall I arise? Then the night drags on. I am filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast, for an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense, but if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? That, when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. 
To the weak, I become weak to win over the weak. I have become all things to all to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel so that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. Thanks. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to mark glory to you lord on leaving the synagogue jesus entered the house of simon and andrew with james and john simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever they immediately told him about her he approached grasped her hand and helped her out then the fever left her and she waited on them. When it was evening after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitted them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, everyone is looking for you. He told them, let us go unto the nearby villages that I might preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So he went into their synagogues, preaching, and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Shalom, church. Peace be with you. The deacon's preaching this morning. <laughs> Thank you, Monsignor, for this opportunity. <laughs> Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we gather on this fifth Sunday in ordinary time, the word of God speaks to us through the book of Job, the Psalms, and the letter to the Corinthians, and the gospel according to Mark. These passages offer us insights into the human experience of suffering, the power of God's healing, and the profound call to share the good news. Most of us are familiar with Lourdes, the Catholic shrine in southern France, built at the place where the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to a young girl, Saint Bernadette Souvereau, in 1858. Pilgrims today continue to throng to our Blessed Mother's Shrine, hoping to cure all their ailments. Over the decades, thousands have left behind their crushes and braces as silent witnesses to the Lord's power to make them well. This sort of thing is, of course, nothing new. Sights of holy apparition and miracles, healing ranging from Lourdes, France, Fatima, Portugal, Guadalupe, Mexico, and Majigori, Yugoslavia, not yet authenticated by the church. To the holy sites in our own land have drawn pilgrims from all countries throughout the ages. These seekers 
have made their way to sacred temples, grottos, and hillsides in the hope of finding healing and strength. Some dismiss such journey of faith as childish piety, inappropriate in an age of therapeutic advances such as our own. But healing is an essential element of the gospel message. Surely, Jesus, whose Sabbath day of preaching and healing ministry is described in today's gospel, will not disappoint us today when we are assembled around the altar seeking his power, healing, and favor in our own lives. The readings today challenge us to go courageously beyond people's expectations by doing good as Jesus did. They invite us to explore the importance of work in our lives and to learn a lesson about work and his motives from Joel, Paul, and Jesus. In the first reading from the book of Job, we encounter the profound lament of a man who in the midst of great suffering expresses the raw emotions of human existence. Job's words resonate with the pain and the struggles that we too face in our lives. Yet, in the midst of his anguish, Job still turns to God, acknowledging the bravery of our life and the heaviness of his heart. It is a reminder that even in our darkest moments, we can find solace in turning to God with honesty and truth. The psalm response echoes the sentiments of Job, praising God who heals the brokenhearted and bring up their wounds. Our God is a God of compassion and mercy, intimately involved in our lives, ready to bring healing to our woundedness. As we reflect on these words, let us open our hearts to God's comforting presence and allow his love to mend the broken places in our lives. In the second reading, St. Paul speaks of his mission to proclaim the gospel willingly, emphasizing the urgency and responsibility he feels in sharing the good news of Christ. Paul's words challenge us to reflect on our own commitment, spreading the message of salvation. How eagerly do we embrace the call to be messengers of hope and reconciliation in a world that often yearns to, the, to these very things. Finally, in the gospel, according to Mark, we witness the healing ministry of Jesus. He cures Simon Peter's mother-in-law, and as evening falls, the whole town gather at the door, bringing their sick and possessed. Jesus responds with compassion and power, healing the afflicted and casting out demons. The image of Jesus rising early to pray underscores the importance of communion with the Father, reminding us that our own mission flows from the deep and abiding relationship with God. As we reflect on these readings, let us be mindful of the suffering around us, whether visible or hidden. May we, like Job, turn to God in our distress and find consolation in his mercy. May we, like St. Paul, embrace our roles as messengers of the gospel, sharing the transformative power of Christ's love with a world in need. And may we be inspired by the example of Jesus, be instruments of healing and compassion in our families, communities, and beyond. We need to be instruments for Jesus' healing work, bringing healing and holiness in Jesus' ministry even today. He continues through the church in the sacrament in anointing of the sick. The church prays 
for spiritual and physical healing, forgiveness of things, and comfort for those who are suffering from illness. We all need the healing of our minds, our memories, and our broken relationships. Jesus now uses counselors, doctors, friends, or even strangers in his healing ministry. Let us look at today's gospel and identify with the mother-in-law of Peter. Let us ask for the ordinary healing we need in our own lives. When we are healed, let us not forget to thank Jesus for his goodness, mercy, and compassion toward us by our own turning to serve others. Our own healing process is completed only when we are ready to help others in their needs and to focus on things outside ourselves. The Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, 39, instruct us, be not slow to visit the sick, because by these things you shall be confirmed in love. Let us also be instruments for the exercise of Jesus' healing power by visiting the sick and praying for their healing. But let us remember that we need the Lord's strength, not only to make ourselves and others well, but to make ourselves and others whole. As we partake in the Eucharist today, let us ask for the grace to be faithful witnesses of the gospel in our homes, workplaces, and communities. May the Holy Spirit guide us and empower us to fulfill the divine obligation to proclaim the good news, following the example of St. Paul and imitating the selfless love of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless us all in our mission to be disciples and witness of the gospel. Amen. We now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord is kind and merciful. Let us make our needs known to him. That God will grant strength and courage to the church as it preaches the gospel to all nations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that God will bless our diocese with an increase of vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That peace will come to the troubled parts of our world and that leaders of nations will work for an end to war and conflict, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have grown weary and tired from the burdens of life will find refreshment and renewal in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are struggling with illness may receive the healing they need, especially Anita Ramos, Dr. Richard O'Reilly, Mike Lopez, Mateo Figueroa, Chris Vidaureta, and Elva Hinajosa, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died will enjoy a new life, forever especially William Mac McCarthy, Kevin Cudi, and all who are being remembered in our weekend masses, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pause to make our personal petitions known in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear our prayers and grant us all that we need to remain faithful to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As our gifts are prepared, let's sing together number 501. Come follow me, number 501. Mm -mm. Come follow me and leave. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord Amen. accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may now become for us the sacrament of eternal life. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. When your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, so that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity and made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit might to the praise of your wisdom be revealed as the church. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Father, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we bring to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and again giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we Therefore, Father, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon this oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Elizabeth, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession 
in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you as they pass from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We now bring our voices together in prayer as the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom and power and glory of yours. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
number 775 
Number 344, Gift of Finest Wheat, 344. Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they know and heed his voice. So when you call Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. With joyful lips we sing to you our praise and gratitude that you should come. Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. Is not the cup we bless and share the blood of Christ outpoured? Do not one cup, one loaf declare? Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. The mystery of your presence, Lord, no mortal tongue can tell. Whom all the world cannot contain. Comes in our hearts to dwell. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. You give yourself to us, O Lord. Then be to serve each other in your name in truth and charity you satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat come give to us O saving lord the bread of life to
few announcements to run by you before we uh, honor all of our birthdays and wedding anniversaries this month. Date Night is a somewhat new ministry in our parish. This is for married couples who want to come together with other married couples for a nice dinner and sometimes a presentation of sorts or just fellowship. And we provide child care here as well. So the first date night is February 17th from 6.30 to 8. Please call the parish office if you'd like to reserve a place for, uh, your, uh, for a couple and if you need child care as well, date night. The Right to Life of Kern County is having their fish fry fundraiser this Friday at Mossman. Fish fry fundraiser on Friday, that's good, okay. Tickets are available after Mass if you want to have a good fish meal this Friday. In the bulletin, I've been running some uh, promotions about a Catholic apologist named Steve Ray, who's somewhat popular on the Catholic circuit. He uh, speaks in defense of the faith and the church's teachings, and uh, he will be speaking at the Kern Catholic prayer breakfast on March 20th. That's an event in the morning at St. Francis. And then he will be here that night, March 20th, to speak to us and those who want to attend. So he'll talk. He's a convert from the Baptist faith to Catholicism and has traveled and is kind of considered to be an expert on the Holy Land. So he should be a good guy to come and listen to. Wednesday, March 20th, if you're interested in tickets, they're $20.00 and they are being sold in the lobby after Mass. We have a grief support group. Our bereavement ministry is starting one of its sessions this February 7th, this week, in the afternoon. For all those who are going through the pain of having lost a loved one, grieving the death of a family member or friend, it's a beautiful ministry, and that will be starting this week. Next week, I will dedicate my homily to talking about some aspects of the Mass here, how we do things, and a few other things we're going to do to kind of fine-tune our liturgies, and also to give you an update on the capital campaign. Last night, we had a very successful gala. It was a lot of fun, and I think we raised some good money. So thank you to all who supported that in various ways. Next week, Super Bowl Sunday, holy day of obligation. <laughs> we have to... We'll have our Super Bowl bake sale once again. So we invite everybody, if you want to make some goodies or cakes or cupcakes or appetizers, and then you just bring them here and we'll put them out and a price tag on it. And all the proceeds go towards our building fund. And then after the morning masses, people can uh, take whatever they want home, you know, for their entertainment and for their guests. So Super Bowl bake sale next Sunday. All right, I think that's it. How many are celebrating a birthday this month, February? Stand up. All February. Happy birthday. Uh, did anybody have a birthday yesterday or today? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Who else? You want us to sing happy birthday to you? Yeah. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. <clears throat> Is anybody born on February 29th? Anybody here? So at the last Mass, we had a couple who were married on February 29th. And I think they said they'd been married, I forget, seven years or eight years, but it's only their second anniversary. <laughs> Isn't that cool? I love that. I love that. Okay, those who are celebrating anniversaries of marriage in February, please stand up and stay standing. All married couples who are going to be celebrating, not too many. Okay. How many years for you guys? Very good. 33, all right. 37 years, very nice. Ah, nice number, 21. 47, very good.
28, 48 years, wow. How many? 40, nice number, very good. Two. You say 51 or 61? 61. Wow, that's incredible. Where were you married? In Shafter, in the Shafter Church. Wow, that's incredible. Was there like stagecoaches here and everything? <laughs> How many years? 38. 38. 41. 41? Excellent. Yeah? Seven years? I like that. Uh, anybody else? Am I missing anybody? Happy anniversary, everybody. I want to thank uh, Deacon Jimmy for being here. He was here for the gala last night, and very good of him to celebrate Masses with us today. He will be ordained a priest in May, so pray for him, okay? Yeah. Thank God someone's going to help me. <laughs> no, he may not be here, I don't know. Anyway, we'll see. Let's now stand and close in prayer. Father, you have willed that we partake in the one bread and the one cup. Grant us, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Mass has ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We send forth with For the Healing, number 743, 743, For the Healing. For 